Hello and welcome to Seniority. I'm your host, Robbie Hay. It's good to have you with us once again. Today I'm talking to two young ladies who are going to give us hopefully a lot of information that we're all looking for, but we don't even know what we're looking for. <laughs> uh, Robin Putnam is from the Research and Development, oh, I did it again, I'm sorry, it's okay. from Consumer Affairs. And Amy Schramm is from the Better Business Bureau, but I'll let them do their own talking. <laughs> Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for and having us. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. Robin, so, so, give us a little background. Yes, so I work for the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation. Um, it is a state agency located in downtown Boston. And we have five agencies that are underneath our offices. We have the um, Division of Banks, Division of Insurance, Professional Licensure, Telecommunications and Cable, and Standards. Oh. Um, and we also, Amy and I have actually been collaborating for about four and a half years. Part of my job is to get out into communities and get information to consumers so that they can make better, more informed and educated decisions for themselves. Um, and we have a consumer hotline that's run Monday through Friday from 9 to 430, 617-973-8787. Mm -hmm. um, if you call us between 9 and 430, uh, you will actually get a human being. Amazing. I know, shocking, it's wonderful. It's a state agency. We take, oh gosh, between three or 400 calls every week. Really? Um, and it may not be something that we can answer. It might be we will give the person, the consumer to the Better Business Bureau, it might be for uh, the Attorney General's office. Um, it might be for the Division of Telecommunications and Cable. But mm -hmm. it's definitely an avenue that consumers can call and let us know that there is an issue, there's a problem, they've heard a new scam. Um, whatever the, the case may be, um, mm -hmm. we are there to answer questions and help d guide them to the right answers. Um, we don't, as yeah. a consumer, yeah. if I have a question, I wouldn't know who to go to. Exactly. So you'd probably get my Call absolutely. We, I take calls all, all the time, so it's. I think it's a it's a wonderful resource for consumers of Massachusetts. Um, it's just I think sometimes you just don't know who to turn to, and you get people get frustrated right. if they get a phone number, yeah. they feel like it's going to press nine, press six, press five, and now they're talking right. to someone in a different state, and it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but if you leave us a message, if we if it's after after hours, we will give you a call the next business day. Um, sometimes we have consumers who will email questions in. Uh, we also have a website, <clears throat> mass.gov forward slash consumer, where there's lots and lots of information for consumers. Wonderful. Um, so we, we try to get as much information out as humanly possible. Um, mm -hmm. But our two, uh, my, my agency and the Better Business Bureau actually have been collaborating for the last four and a half years. And we give between, gosh, two or three hundred programs every year in Massachusetts. Really? Yeah, we're, we are busy and on the what road. What type of programs do you do? Well, we talk a lot about identity theft and fraud. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's a big issue. Uh -huh. um, sometimes we'll talk about uh, home improvement contracting in Massachusetts or the Lemon Laws, shopping rights, um, whatever the consumer, mm -hmm. consumer group needs, um, we can tailor a program to what they need and hopefully get a, as much information out to them as they need. Um, but I'll have Amy introduce herself and she can talk about the Better Business Bureau. Thank you. Thank you. So it's been a pleasure collaborating with Robin and her office for the last four years um, because I think a lot of people are familiar at least with the name Better Business Bureau. You've probably heard of us. <laughs> yes. We're a 100 year old nonprofit organization, but not everyone is familiar a with the facets. I did not know a Better Business Bureau was nonprofit. Amazing, isn't it? And and it's important for us to let people know that so that people know that, that we are a public service organization. I mean, that's why collaborating with Robin's agency is so important because um, so much of what Robin does in particular in her outreach and getting out into the communities and speaking to the public on a variety of topics is exactly what I was hired to do um, eight years ago with the Better Business Bureau. Okay. And our office is actually located in Marlboro, Massachusetts, but we serve from that one office all of eastern Massachusetts, including the Cape and the Islands. We were actually just on Nantucket not long ago. <laughs> um, and uh, Maine, Vermont, and Rhode Island. So if there was someone that had a question about a business or an organization that was located within that service area, they would contact our office located in Marlboro. And just like Robin, um, if you were to contact her office, 
um, between the hours of 9 to 4.30 for her office. If you contact us between the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., you can speak to an individual who will be able to either answer How your question. How <laughs> right? refreshing. Answer your yeah. question or point you in the direction of another organization or agency like Robin's office who might be able to, to better assist. But what we really want people to know beyond anything is that we help serve as a free precautionary resource tool. So we have a database of over five and a half million businesses thousands of charity organizations and then you know the topic that Robin and I are going to get into today in regards to robocalls and, and scam issues um, we have an entire database within our, our website bbb.org that is constantly being updated um, and people can stay up to date Robin and I make jokes um, but lightly that we have amazing job security because there's never going to be a shortage of these uh, scammers certainly <laughs> over the phone um, and so it's just important to, to, con to continue to educate and stay up to date and uh, be aware of what those issues are and mm -hmm. that's really why we're in the community every day doing this and meeting with you today and, and educating nice. the public wonderful yeah very good well if you don't mind I would love to start with these Robocalls. Oh, yes. I know. I, I'll leave the expletives out. Sure. <laughs> Smart. Yes. Um, usually that's actually the number one topic we start off with because robocalls, quite honestly, are affecting everyone. It's right. not, no one's necessarily being targeted, although sometimes it might feel like you're being targeted. Um, every age, every demographic is getting them. Um, I get them on my cell phone. I get them at work. Right. I do believe that there is someone who is spoofing our office and from time to time we'll have a consumer call us and say, did you call me? Uh -huh. um, our office will never call a consumer randomly out of the blue and ask for personal information. Um, <laughs> the and only I think that's the truth about right. most of these offices. Am I of We're never going to call out of yeah. the blue. If you called and left us a message um, after hours, yes, we'll call you right back. Very but good. we don't have time in our day to randomly <laughs> call consumers. It's, 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 I it's, think it's, that's <laughs> very important for people Absolutely. to know. And yesterday, before noon time, I got eight robotic calls. Mm. I don't answer them. So please, can you tell me mm -hmm. why they call? Because they're just hoping you're going to pick up. The biggest issue, the biggest thing that we all can do is simply not pick up the phone. And it's it's probably the one is most challenging thing for us to not do is to pick up the phone. Well, most phones also show the right. number that's calling. But sometimes if the area code is within your area code or it looks like it might be your yes. town or it pops up my office, the IRS, the Better Business Bureau, they, yeah. a scammer knows that it might pique our interest. IRS, well, Washington, D.C. That came up on my phone yesterday twice. And I, and I got a little nervous because mm -hmm. I, I do have friends who, who live in Washington, but sure. their numbers would normally pick up with their, their names. But it did get me a little, made me a little nervous. And I didn't, let, I didn't answer the phone, but again, it was a robocall. It was someone saying they were from Medicare and Medicaid. I said, well, I'm a little young for that, so it's obviously <laughs> the wrong person. But the scammers know that if it's a local area code, we're more likely to pick it up because they know we're curious. Mm -hmm. And I've had a call with my own phone oh, number yeah. and my name. Sure. And that's even more curious because we now, the right. scammer knows, oh, she's going to answer because she's <laughs> curious. We're all curious. Are it's we really? Bizarre. Are right. we, it's bizarre. Yeah. Are we calling ourselves? It is. Right. Um, and they simply make money because you answered the phone. Wow. They said, we have a live one, check. Let's sell her information to somebody else. Um, oh. And the thing is, you can download apps on your smartphone, and I could scramble my phone number. So when I call you, it might pipe up, pop up, sorry, uh, the Better Business Bureau, IRS, my office. I can put in any name or number that oh. pops up. So people, we always say, if you don't recognize the number 110%, don't answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Even if it says your local police department or fire department, I'm not knocking any fire department, mm -hmm. law enforcement at all, but why are they calling you? Right. Is, do you know the chief of police directly? Is he really calling you? Mm -hmm. um, and right. it's, it's just, the scammers know we're unfortunately really curious. And it's just, we have to stop being curious. If you don't recognize the phone number, let it go. And scrambling the number that pops up in the caller ID is one of the simplest ways for mm -hmm. them to deceive us, really, because they know that we're curious, like Robin said. And also, um, what Robin mentioned in regards to just answering the phone, it's so important to remember that and to keep that in mind. 
simply answering the phone is giving the scammer way more than we even realize because what we're doing is we're saying, well, you just dialed, let's say, a thousand phone numbers today, and uh, mine was one of the ones that had a human on the other end of it. Yeah. So if I answer today at two o'clock, maybe tomorrow at two o'clock I'll answer again, or three or four. Sure. They know that their law of averages increases the more somebody answers. And then not only will that individual now have our number and be able to contact us day in and day out about a variety of different things every day, but they're going to sell our information. And I oh. think once we sort of understood that and, and understood that concept, we became less likely to answer the phone, but sure. not everybody is aware of that. They're going to make money off of mm -hmm. the fact that we're just answering. Wow, how about the do not call registry? Does that <laughs> work at all? So I know I've done that, it several times. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. That actually falls under our office. Oh, okay. um, The do not call registry actually does work for legitimate businesses. If business ABC keeps calling you because you've done business with them, and they you can call them and say, please stop calling me. If if you don't, I'm going to alert the do not call list, and they can be fined. But the problem is, it doesn't it doesn't really work for our scammers. They don't care. They're not calling. Usually, they're not calling from here. They're not Macy's or LL Bean or Sears that are calling to harass you. They're some guy in a foreign country who's trying to get you to buy this, to buy that, to tell them your social security number, to tell them your full bank account information number. They're, they're looking, that, the ro that uh, do not call us, unfortunately, is, does work, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but not for scammers. They don't care. They're not, they're not lawful. <laughs> I'm yeah. amazed at how many people have actually given out their social security number. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It's shocking, well, quite honestly. It is. And it's really interesting because, um, like Robin said, they aren't real businesses necessarily that are contacting us. Mm -hmm. So it's throwing people off because what the scammers are doing is they're impersonating those real businesses. Mm -hmm. They're pretending to be from the you know a state agency, like the Office of Consumer Affairs or the IRS or Medicare or Social Security Administration um, or your local phone provider or police department. They're pretending to be from legitimate businesses and organizations because they think or know that we're more likely to divulge personal information if we think we're speaking to a real individual, a real representative from a real business, as opposed to somebody calling us from Jamaica or China or Russia or Toronto, you know, who is mm -hmm. calling in to obtain our personal information. We're not as likely to, to give away that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It, it So many things amaze me, but one of the uh, calls that I've received is, uh, they actually leave a message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the message, the most recent message I received is, uh, if you don't call this number within the next half hour, we are going to charge you for another year for the book, that the magazine that you may not be reading. Mm. So if you don't want to receive the magazine anymore, mm. and if you don't want us to take the money out of your account for another year, call us. Mm. No, I did not answer it, because wow. I don't have any magazines that are coming to me. Mm. Yeah. That's, uh, that's odd. I would definitely uh, report that number to mm. the uh, Okay, um, because I've had, that was one of, Three sure. numbers, the same sure. number, uh, yesterday, and it's wow, and three messages. That's wow. amazing. It must be a dumb scammer because usually, <laughs> <laughs> usually a scammer is not going to leave a working number for you to call them back on because mm -hmm. that number can be traced and they can be found. Mm -hmm. Usually that just goes to voicemail. They do nothing happens and they don't care. Mm. Um, but he he or she must be dumb. Uh, that's, okay. That's a little crazy. That's, no. But Robin we'll did mention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Robin did mention reporting it. Yes. It's so yeah. important. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to reiterate that. Reporting Who that. Who would I report it to? It's a good question. You can report it to the Federal Trade Commission. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I would start there. The Federal Communications Commission is working with the Federal Trade Commission to combat some of these phone issues. and. Um, I would say one of the only reasons that they're able to do that is because people are reporting the information. You can also report to the Better Business Bureau. We have a, a scam tracker actually, and you can go directly to our website, um, report via our scam tracker everything that is reported 
to us via our scam tracker we share with the Federal Trade Commission and then they work with the authorities like the Federal Communications Commission to help combat it and there's a new program that they're rolling out right yes there is a new program by the um, FCC the Federal Communications Commission it's called shake in and stir it's helping to combat uh, robocalls and uh, all of our large nationwide carriers, AT&T, Verizon, of search, they have signed on to use it and they have noticed a downtick, a slight downtick, <laughs> in robocalls. And what it, what it does is, if you are, say, a Verizon customer here in Massachusetts, if, if their system suspects that it's a fraudulent robocall, it will pop up either scam or possible scam, question mark. Mm -hmm. um, if you get that, just know that it's the, the computer system is working. Um, and it's they have been they have been noticing a downtick, which I think is a wonderful thing. Um, it's just mm -hmm. the more we don't answer the phone, the better. Um, if you if you just if someone if a scammer or a person leaves you a message, though, I have to always say, never call back that number or never give personal information out over the phone if you haven't initiated that. Um, because sometimes our scammers will find small pieces of information about us. Maybe you just went to the ATM and you had the receipt and you threw it out. So a scammer might get that and say, oh, Sarah Smith lives at 151 Main Street in whatever town, Massachusetts, and she's a Bank of America customer, and here are the last four digits of her credit card information. Let's call her and impersonate that bank or another credit card company. I'm not knocking Bank of America. I'm just using myself as an example. but. Sure. They will call and say, you know, this is Sarah. I'm calling from your bank. We noticed some discrepancies. Were you at this shop last night trying to buy a $2,000 TV? Mm -hmm. If you could please call us back immediately, we'd like to get, go through this with you. So you, you get a little nervous and you go, wow, I should just call that number back. Mm -hmm. sure. The problem is there's no way to know if that really was Sarah from your bank. You really should pull out your ATM card or your credit card that they say they're from and call the 800 customer service number associated at the back of that card or a statement. Because then you can say, all right, I really am calling my bank and say, it might not be the fraud department, it's the customer mm -hmm. service, but that's okay. You can call them and say, this is you know, Sarah Smith, I'm calling, there's, there's, is there a problem with my accounts? And they can walk you through. They'll say one of two things, it wasn't us calling. Did you give personal information over the phone to anybody? If mm -hmm. you did, what information did you give? If you didn't, or they might say, actually, it was us. Were you at this business last night trying to buy a $2,000 TV? Yeah. Um, so our, our banks and our credit card companies, they are watching. Um, it sounds, yes, it sounds, I've heard that yeah, some they uh, are. banks will call and say, did you buy? Yes. Yeah. Um, they're doing that because they don't want to deal with fraud either. It's it's a sure. nasty thing to deal with, and especially if it's a large number item. Sure, any any you any know? item. If it's outside of your spending limit, right? They'll they'll red flag that and call you immediately. That's, mm -hmm. that's also very good to know mm -hmm. that you know. It is. We're and all in it together. We are. We unfortunately, are. Unfortunately, but like yes. Like you two working together. Yep. I mean, private sure. and and and. Public, I guess, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting, you know, that our banks and credit card providers are more closely monitoring. It feels good to know that they are, but then we still have to be cautious when the phone rings, right? right. Because it could really be them, and it might be a fraudster, it could be a scammer, and so hanging up and calling that number back, or calling the appropriate yeah. number back, like Robin was mentioning, is sure. the, the number one thing for us to do. Yeah. Absolutely. And then to be able to recognize that while we may be looking out for those larger transactions when we're monitoring our, monitoring our own statements as we should do regularly, also to be aware of the smaller transactions, $5, $3, even $1 at a time. Those are the transactions that our banks or credit card providers might not notice mm -hmm. when they're monitoring right. because, you know, would a dollar seem unusual sure. or $5 or $10, you know, if someone buys a coffee every morning on the way to work. And who would really think that? I think I heard, I heard you mention this, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's a smaller amount times sure. many people. Exactly. There's still a lot of dollars. A scammer mm -hmm. can make more money scamming 10,000 people once a month of $2 as opposed to trying one consumer once a month for 10,000 mm because -hmm. they know they know your bank is going to pick that up. I mean, my bank and credit card company would red flag that in a second. They know I would never spend $10,000 on my credit card mm -hmm. ever. Right. Um, and but I think if you're going to if you're going to go make a purchase that's outside of your spending limit let your credit card company know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going to go buy a new laptop, so I made sure, I'm like, you know, I, maybe you should call Visa. And I did, and I said, look, I'm going to go to this store tomorrow between this, these hours, spending a roughly around this much money. 
I need that to go through. And they were very nice. They said, look, you know, thank you so much for calling. Um, that's well outside of your spending limits. We never would have let that go through. And I Excellent. said, I'm like, great. But and, you know, it's, it's when I take a vacation. Sure. I let the uh, uh, bank know that mm -hmm. I'm going to be somewhere else. I think that's a, a wonderful thing. Not that I'm thing. a big spender, but just in case. <laughs> but they, they should know that. And I think <laughs> if you're going to go on that wonderful long vacation for six or seven weeks and you're going to be out of the country for that long, don't post that online until you come home. Very good. Don't do that because there are people who are watching. Excellent. Um, and you don't know if they're watching you, if they're not. Well, the, the whole town of whatever you live where, you know, is going to know she's gone for six weeks and she's right. in a foreign country. Fantastic. Let's go hit her house up. I mean, it did it happen to a celebrity. So you really want to make sure if you're going to post that fabulous vacation, do it after or at least have a, a house watcher, <laughs> someone who's sure. going to stay there and for the week. And it's amazing that you say that because people on vacation, uh, we're in an age where they love to take a picture and show you where they are and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it even has to be on vacation. It seems like everyone wants true. to post their, their breakfast. <laughs> it's so true. It's and so the new true. shoes they just bought. You're like, yeah. okay, that's great. You could be uh, in the next town over and that's enough time for someone to break in, believe well, yeah. it or not. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. So, Robin, yes. as research, I'm, t I'm honing in on that word. Sure. What is, what is new and what do you see? He, I know you can't anticipate a new scam. But, sure. Uh, um, it's not that I, I don't necessarily anticipate. I just, I hear a lot. Um, it sounds kind of wacky, but I hear, when I, when I talk to different groups, I hear about certain things or certain trends. Like I think the, the last six weeks we kept hearing about the Social Security was mm -hmm. calling and oh. saying to, to consumers all over, you know, there's something wrong with your Social Security account. We need to fix it and we take Visa or MasterCard. Mm -hmm. And it literally... Yes, I've had that call I, Well, yeah. Mm. It was interesting because that, that call came in every single time I spoke to a group in, in the last six weeks, and that's a lot of groups, mm -hmm. every, there was at least one person who had received that call. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times when I hear about different things like that, um, I will... So of the people, when I talk to groups, whoever I set the meeting up with, I'll let those people know and say, hey, you know, I heard about the scam. It's in Chicopee right now. It may not be in the Cape, but let your people know it's coming, mm -hmm. or vice versa. Um, the Massachusetts Council on Aging Directors, they have a really great network, and whenever I hear something, I'll let the, the head person, you know, whoever handles their communication, say, look, Lynn, this is going on. I keep hearing it. You might want to just let everybody know. And she might put it in her monthly newsletter saying, sure. hey, it's, uh, it's out there. If you mm -hmm. haven't heard about it, it might be coming your mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But I think we do have a wonderful network. If I hear about something, I'll let Amy know, and she'll say, hey, did you hear about this? And it's, I think the more you, the more you talk about everything, um, the better and safer right. you're going to be. But that's, that's the caveat, because most people don't want to talk about fraud. They get embarrassed. They don't want anybody to think, mm -hmm. I might have fallen for that. Mm -hmm. I might have... Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't really win the lottery of Ireland. And oh. it's amazing mm -hmm. how many yep. very intelligent people very intelligent. who uh, will fall for it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. true. Yeah. And I think it's because of the tactics that are being used today yes. and because right. of the technology that's out there and the information that is already out there, let alone continuing to be spread. Sure. It's so easy for us to find information online. Mm -hmm. Even if we have never put our information out there, you know, if we, if we don't have email or we're not on social media sites, whatever it is, yeah. somehow our information has gotten out yes. there and they're using it. The fraudsters are using mm -hmm. it. And um, Robin always mentions um, that now it's more of like a social engineering type tactic, social manipulation really. So what these scammers are doing is they're finding smaller pieces of information on us, contacting us and making it sound like we know who we're speaking to because they have right. very basic information on us. Mm -hmm. We're more likely to give away, like we were mentioning earlier, our you know uh, bank account information or our credit card number to someone on the phone who's contacted us and told us that they thought that they noticed a, a discrepancy with our account or someone might yeah. have picked up our, our information. And so um, that sort of uh, impersonation tactic mm -hmm. that's circulating with the Social Security Administration and 
particular, IRS for the last few years, Medicare a few years back. Um, they're doing that, like we've mentioned, mm -hmm. because they they know that um, it's a real agency. And although we know better than to give away our social security information, right. we're more likely to if we believe who we're speaking to. And they're good at what they do. We don't like to give the scammers too much credit, but they're good at it. <laughs> and it's tax time, too. Yes. Oh, oh. gosh. So. so if you're... No. <laughs> you have bring up a really great thing. I just read an article yesterday about tax time. Mm -hmm. If you are waiting for your taxes to arrive in your mailbox, make sure you are there when your postman arrives at whatever time. Um, so people will love to steal your tax information. Mm -hmm. um, it's horrible. It's against the law to go into right. the, someone else's mailbox, if, unless yeah. you work for the post office. But. It's I just don't think they're worried about the law. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, probably not. But I think um, I I know my taxes are arriving soon. Uh, my accountant, I'm not a math person. I hire an accountant. Uh, he already called. He's like, look, it should be in your mailbox tomorrow. I said, fantastic. I will make sure to go home early um, and make sure it's there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just it's just trying to keep uh, abreast of all of the information mm -hmm. and, and, and know that what the issues could be so that you can kind of be on the lookout for things. If something, some, if something looks a little at, off or a little mm -hmm. out of the ordinary, it probably is mm -hmm. out of the ordinary. And Amy, as you said, they're getting more and more uh, sophisticated. Yes. Sophisticated, mm -hmm. yeah. They're sly. They take their yeah. time now. It's more lucrative for them to take a little bit of time with people than it is to call us and say, we're going to come repossess your car in an hour if you don't forward <laughs> us you know, a $1,000 iTunes gift card or something. Right. Where we are still falling victim to that tactic on occasion, but we're less likely to because there's just so much pressure involved and it sounds so outlandish. Whereas mm -hmm. now they're taking their time and they're sort of grooming us in a way. Yes. Yeah, truly. I mean, they find out all kinds of information. Um, I know that um, when people pass away, a lot of times the family will donate all of their books to the local library. What are you going to do with all the books? Sometimes in those piles are yearbooks. And I know some of the local library. this is not against the law, but some of the lo local libraries are scanning old yearbooks. So even if you didn't grow up when the internet was there, your information from high school, grade school is online oh, now. Very interesting. So if your password happens to be your high school sweetheart, or you played soccer, and what was oh. the what was the number on your uniform, or what was the high school mascot, or what was the address? That information you think is not online because oh, I graduated in 1996. I didn't have the internet then, or 91, whatever it was. And now you can say, well, guess what? Your your book is online. So Very that password that you thought was really creative, some guy is saying, well, the mascot was this. Her her number of her jersey was this and here was a high school sweetheart i bet you one of those has got to be a password um and it's i did go to one of the libraries and i just looked up online it's not against the law they're not doing anything sure. wrong but there's yeah. there's so much information mm -hmm. well there are people looking for so much information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on their background sure mm -hmm. yes that uh, i can understand why the libraries would scan the old Right. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that, that something that could be so wonderful is really being used against us. Mm -hmm. And But I think it's about keeping up with the times. You know, right. there's a reason that our social security number has been taken off of our, or was taken off of the license years right. ago. Yep. And now it's not no longer on the Medicare cards. Yeah. As, you know, technology is evolving, we've had to do yeah. so, you know, with, with these little pieces as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to have to interrupt both of you because <laughs> I want you each to give your um, um, information, oh, uh, your contact information. Sure. Um, sure. So our hotline is runs Monday through Friday from nine to four thirty. It's six one seven nine seven three eight seven eight seven. And Amy. Sure. Our Better Business Bureau website is bbb.org. Very simple. Um, and our phone number that you can also find on the website is 508-652-4800. But bbb.org is, is a huge, huge resource tool. Excellent. Yes. And I should probably mention our website. If <laughs> yes, you think absolutely. Mass.gov forward slash consumer. We're very easy to find as well. <laughs> very good. Well, this has been wonderful. Great, I've learned you. a great deal. I hope my people out there have also learned a great deal, and I hope they'll add to your myriad of phone calls, <laughs> <laughs> at yeah. least during the next week. Of course. We're happy to take them. <laughs> yes, of Thank course. You. And welcome. I'm so happy that you wanted to be here. My pleasure. Thank happy you. to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you to you out there for being with us. And this is your host, Robbie Haig, for Downtown. 
and I hope to see you again real soon.